park and this project I'm making a coffee table for my daughter um, I made these legs in another video a little while back and I'm going to show y'all a trick for how to dowel all these in well these are the cans that I'll be starting with the coffee table's got two levels to it so it's going to use a lot of wood and a lot of scraps let's get to the sawmill Well, there's it all milled up. I didn't do the biggest cant. I don't think that I needed it. They, uh... Well, they decided to go with a coffee table that's 30 by 46. So the first thing I want to do is make the bottom shelf. It'll be about an inch smaller than those measurements. We'll get it in. And the top, I'm going to do uh, like four triangular pieces uh, just to give it some design. Not sure. I cut everything six inches too long so that when you run it through the joiner and the planer, if any problems appear, you can cut off the suspension. Next, we'll run the rough cut lumber through the jointer. It will make two sides perfectly square and smooth to each other. So these two sides, this one and this one, are perfectly square and nice and smooth compared to the, the rough cut side. So this, the other two sides will be taken care of with the planer. Well, let's get the rest of them joined and we'll get outside to the planer. Well, next we'll run it through the planer. The planer will get all my boards the exact same thickness. And then the width of it doesn't matter, but it'll get the true side, the two sides true to one another. I do it outside because it's kind of dusty. Well, I got all my boards cut the length. I put a stop on my saw so they're exactly the right length. And I am drawing some lines for the biscuit cutter. Line up by about every nine inches. The legs I made in another video, I don't know, a year ago or so, they were just in my stockpile. So I decided to use them on this project. So next, we'll set up the biscuit cutter. For the first board, I only want to cut the slots in the connecting side, not the outer side. So we'll flip it around. Just line up the line you made at the center. Push down really hard. And that makes the slot. Right, next we want to glue it. I'm using Type Bond 3. It's a slow setting, slower setting glue. Well, while the glue's drying, I'm going to lay out each corner. It's going to be notched out. So is this going to fit in around this square part of the leg. Where I've laid out my corners, each one's a little different than the other and I labeled it. Before you cut, be sure that your jigsaw is perfectly square because if it's off just a little, it throws these legs crazy. Just check it with a square. I'm using a DeWalt and it's a clean cut name of the blade. And be sure you sand all this real well because you're not going to be able to get to it that good once the leg's there. Well, next, I got the top upside down and I went ahead and sanded the legs and the bottom. Um, this will attach. What I'm going to do is put some pocket screws, two on this side and two on this side, and then one 45 degree in the corner. And then I, after I get the entire thing assembled, I'm going to back one screw out at a time and replace it with a dowel and get it all good and glued in. Right now we're just going to temporarily screw it together. Well next I'm going to build a frame from leg to leg to hold the table top down. Um, 
I built these before and I know that whatever it measures from inside to inside here, both ways, you simply add an inch and a quarter to it and that gives you the dimension for up here. So we'll get those cut out. I got some scrap pieces. I'll get it out and rip them in the vertical band saw. Well, I got my frame pieces made. I got one put in. See the pocket screws holding the corner. And I've got some holes drilled that will hold the top on when the time comes. Well, next to build the top, she wants it to have four triangular shaped pieces. <clears throat> so I took and penciled out, I don't know if you can see this, penciled out the corners and then I drew an X basically diagonally and the corner of my table is the corner would be the corner as well as what I drew so I took some of my scraps and I laid it out and it was a little bigger than that triangle piece and we'll do all four pieces that way and glue them together well, I glued together three triangle pieces out of scrap I didn't video all that because it was the same process as building that with the glue in and the biscuits so I made it bigger than I needed and I'll already cut this one I'll take and I'll trace it off the lines and cut it an eighth inch bigger using a straight edge and a skill saw and then polishing it to the line with the joiner well I'll show you on this one all the pieces fit together perfect I will uh, I've laid lines out where I'm gonna put a whole bunch of biscuits in it because glue and inboard together isn't that strong and we'll let the glue dry and put the top one later today well next we'll get it flipped over and I'll show you how to do those dowels. All right, I backed out the screw here and I'm gonna drill it out as deep as I can. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the one at a time. I'm gonna leave the corner screw, this one, in. I like uh, dowel glued in better than I do screws. You don't have to do this, I just think it's stronger. And on the dowel, I, I took uh, some really rough sandpaper, 32 grit, and I've made scratches in it lengthwise. And that will allow the glue to escape out the edges because it's going to be like a pressurized chamber. And I, I just get better results that way. I'm using a quick set glue too. We're going in about an inch and a half, it looks like. Well, that's the look I was looking for. Or this is the bottom. Well, next we'll get it flipped over and sanded, and I'll have to get them to pick out what stain they want to use. Well, next we're going to give it a good sanding. I'm using a 120 grit sandpaper. 5 inch DeWalt orbital disc 8 hole sander with a dust collector on it. Well, next, I'm going to use a pre stain, a pre wood conditioner. I'll put a link to it on the side and you just simply just wipe it on really fast. It's almost like water. This will 
let the uh, stain be more even since we're talking uh, these legs have ingrain as well as different because the pieces were glued together and it'll give you a more even stain. You have about two hours from the time you apply this to the time you put your stain on there. When we're ready to stain it, I'm using a Minwax Classic Gray and I will put two coats on it. Just wipe it on as fast as you can. Well, next, we're going to give it a coat of polycrylic. And I'll give it a couple of coats. I do say in between the coats, uh, give it about two or three hours to dry, to dry out, and then hit it with a 220 grit. And I'm using a synthetic brush. This is a water-based product, so there's very little odor. Real simple to apply. Well, that's the finished product. You can see uh, the cross grains, how I did that for the tabletop. And there's a, some other videos when I make these doors and also another video of her kitchen table. Well, we appreciate y'all watching and we'll see you on the next one.